Hey, what's going on? My name's Robert, and you are watching Southpaw Auto Works. This is the 42 to 44RE. In this video, we're gonna be diving into the inspection of said unit. Andy is gonna be covering the basics, and he'll also be covering some things that are easily overlooked. Without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Doing our inspection on our little Chrysler unit here, I want to show you some things to look for. We'll start with some planetary units itself, as we've discussed in a couple of previous videos. When we're looking at the planetary carriers, we want to make sure that none of the pinions themselves will wobble on the support pin itself. So that's a very quick check. We just make sure they don't move too much there. And we're also looking for side to side clearance. There's washers on either side to limit that. And one last thing, we do the little pick or screwdriver check. And if we see anything in the gear teeth themselves, not on the outer edge, okay, that's not a contact point. It's down here, about halfway down on the tooth itself where we're looking. For anything that catches our eye as far as a groove or a, uh, any damage in there. And if the pick catches on that, we're pretty much going to call that no good. We're going to replace the entire planet. These can be rebuilt, but not something we would normally do in-house. So look over all the planets themselves. This was out of the uh, overdrive unit. We've got two other planets to look at. Same thing, checking the wobble on the pins, checking washers, make sure they don't walk too far back and forth, looking for damage on the uh, teeth themselves. And then also, the sun gears themselves, same thing. We're looking at teeth down here. We sometimes need to get a flashlight, look down in here a little bit better, make sure there's no groove, no, no damage down in here that the uh, pick would catch on. Same thing here, another sun gear that was out of our overdrive unit. Pretty common on uh, the Chrysler units for this sun gear to see wear down in those teeth. And I usually run some brake clean across there, clean them off, and then flashlight, and I'm looking once again down in there on those teeth to make sure. Very common uh, failure item, so I do replace those quite often on the uh, Chrysler units. This little plate that goes on here also, high failure item, it actually gets stuck. It actually wears against the sun gear teeth themselves, and it catches, if you can see, it's smooth. If I pull out on it, it won't turn it. You can hear it catching on the sun gear teeth. That's actually wear on the plate itself. What I do on these units, automatically I just put a new bearing kit. So I think three different bearings go in that overdrive unit, comes as a kit, like I said. Also replaces, uh, or comes with this plate itself, a new plate, an updated plate. So just put a new bearing kit in there and be done with it. Look at the sun gear, look at the planets, uh, inside the unit back here, the overdrive itself, usually not a problem. We don't see much wear and tear. Ring gears themselves, kind of rare to, to see any issue there. But of course, we do want to take a look at that. On the back side of the overdrive unit, we've got a very large bearing support, bearing that sits in that overdrive housing. Not a common problem, but we do check that for wear and roughness. And while we're talking about that, I think I mentioned it before in the video, you got a groove on this bearing right here. And that is where this snap ring locates. This is the guy we pulled the plate off, expanded that snap ring, allowed us to remove this whole unit from the housing itself. On the smaller units such as this, it's not a problem, but on the larger units in the uh, overdrives, excuse me, the uh, diesel units, 46, 47, 48 uh, REs. Common for that snap ring groove to wear. The snap ring is allowed to move too much. That allows all the components to move too much inside the unit. That requires putting a new housing. This whole housing itself has to be replaced. On the ones that have a slight amount of wear, there is a shim that we came up with years ago that I can actually take credit for that I, I came up with the idea. And that shim would set down in the base of this housing 
and it would go in here underneath the bearing between this bearing and where it sits in the pocket and that would make up for the wear inside the housing where that snap ring's moving back and forth. The problem we run into on the diesel units, there's so much torque, so much thrust, everything is being shoved back and forth in there. It wears this housing out so bad we just have to toss the housing. The shim is not a fix. I've had them out there so long, even with the shim in place where they'll tear up the shim again and the housing itself. The uh, diesel just has too much uh, torque there. Just can't handle it in the aluminum housing. Clutches, of course, from the overdrive section, two different sets, plus the uh, clutches and the rest of the unit, the direct drum, the forward drum. We're just gonna put in new stuff, all right? Um, steel's, once again, cheaper just to replace. I think I mentioned thrust washers, big wear item on these. If I had a brand new one, which I don't, I would show you this washer and it would look obviously a lot different, but all these washers do have a lot of wear on them and that's pretty common. So what I'm gonna do besides our overhaul kit with clutches, steels, bands, the bearing kit, we're gonna put a new wash, uh, thrust washer kit in here, as well as some new selective washers to control the amount of end play in the unit. I mentioned that before. We've got end play on the rear planetary section that sits on here. We'll put new washers. We'll put a couple shims in there to tighten that up a little bit. And another item to look for, not as much on the smaller uh, units, but the diesels and the large V8s. The lugs will wear in here where this meets or connects with the direct drum. If we can show you that. This is constantly being rocked back and forth. And what'll happen is you'll see wear down in these little lugs where it lugs to the drum itself. A little bit of wear in there, like this guy's got, not bad. We can let that go. But if we've got a deep groove here where this thing's rocking back and forth, we'll just replace this entire shell itself. Those are uh, available to us. Another thing I'd like to note, talking about the clutch packs, pistons, and so forth down in there. These aluminum pistons, where the seal rides, I mentioned the seal that's down in this drum, where it rides on the inner bore of this piston itself, if Robert can see that, or you can see that in the video, there's some real shiny areas, some kind of dull area. The shiny area obviously is where, is where the uh, most amount of wear is. What I do on these guys is I take some Scotch-Brite and some solvent or brake clean and I run that down in that bore itself and I kind of polish that back up, clean that up a little bit. So you're always going to see a little wear, a little groove in there. And if we can polish that up a little bit, that'll make for a better sealing surface for the seal that's in the drum itself. Chrysler did have some issues with delayed shifting. And part of that was because of this drum and the leakage between the seal and the piston itself. So I'll polish that, and then I'll also take Scotch-Brite and polish the seal surface on the outer diameter of that drum where that seal rides. Don't have to spend too much time with it, but we just kind of clean and polish it up a little bit. Real quick, if this content is adding value, please let us know by hitting that like button. It does help the channel, and we do greatly appreciate your feedback. Our piston support support in the back of the case. This is the guy that was bolted on the back of the case itself. That uh, provides support for the drum that rides back here. Right there. We're looking for wear on that surface. We're looking for wear down in the bore where it rides, the shaft itself rides down inside that uh, retainer. If we've got any grooves, scratches, so forth, any of those surfaces, we just replace that housing itself. A uh, couple of things I wanted to show on the valve body. Let's remove the uh, filter. This is the large, what they call Dacron type filter. There was a shorter version of it on some of the earlier models. 
this is most common until I think about 03 or somewhere around there. This was changed to a plastic filter, a much thicker filter, but it still had a Dacron uh, material in it. And then they eliminated one of the bolts or screws that holds it down. It was just a two bolt uh, filter hold down on that. But look on the top side of that where it sits against the valve body. We can see where some of our contamination has gathered on their clutch material and other stuff. Obviously, new filter, no big deal there. I just wanted to point out differences in filters. Because this is electronically controlled, we have shift solenoids, lockup solenoid here. We have a governor solenoid here, and we have a governor pressure sensor or transducer right here. If I'm building the unit, this all gets replaced as part of the overhaul. These are electromagnetic solenoids, so that means what? They've got uh, magnets in them. What do magnets do? They attract metal. So they're going to suck in the metal down into the solenoid itself. You can try and clean them. If uh, Robert can get a good view of this, here's a good indicator right here on the governor solenoid. That's a whole metal ring, if you will, around there. It's attracting all the metal. So that's there. It's inside the unit, inside the solenoid, inside these solenoids. We just put new ones on. We don't try and go with the old ones. Too many issues. And on a Chrysler, you've got the shift solenoids, the harness, and the connector itself. That's all one unit when you buy that. It's not separate pieces. The governor solenoid, which is a high failure, by the way, as well as the sensor, these are a real problem on the Chryslers. We're just going just gonna to replace them. And if we do a build on this, I'll show you some of the tips and tricks on this. We'd obviously put in some type of a shift kit or update kit in the valve body while we're in there. Need parts and tools for your transmission rebuild? Check out the resources section in the video description down below. So one thing I wanted to point out for you, a little bit of uh, additional information is on that input shaft forward drum. When we, I think when we were first doing the disassembly, I talked about the different types of torque converters, lock-up clutch, non-lock-up clutch. This guy here, the input shaft itself, has this little machined end on the end. Uh, itself that goes into the um, torque converter and rides against the seal with the lockup clutch type uh, torque converter. Just to show you the difference, I have the non lockup type input shaft here for a comparison where the splines run clear to the end. The much earlier units only use the non lockup, where the later units did the lockup converter. We'll have to go into details on the lockups, how they work, and what they're there for. And we will do a video on that, by the way. I've been looking forward to doing a, a torque converter video. We've got some cut open torque converters to show you the inside. Most guys have never seen that. I think that would be a cool video to, to show you. And also in a note, if this were a non lockup, which had this type of spline input shaft, we would only have one solenoid here instead of two, because you would just simply have a three, four shift solenoid you would no longer have a lockup solenoid. Those were on the early, early units themselves. The one-way clutches we also want to look at. We've got this big guy from the uh, overdrive section, which is a double set of springs and rollers. This guy is usually not a high wear item. It's something that is kind of a uh, call on that, whether you want to replace it. Like I said, usually not a problem. Very rarely have I ever seen it fail. All we're looking for there is any damage to the rollers, the springs that have gotten weak. Uh, it's kind of a, a quick, easy test is to see whether any of these springs and rollers are going to fall out of here easy, give you an idea if the spring tension is good. Same thing on the low one-way clutch, which sits in the back of the case. This is a steel cage, springs and roller type. Also not a real wear item. These most of the time can just simply be reused in the unit. Uh, without any issues whatsoever, unless, of course, like I said, we see any springs or rollers that are just simply falling out of there as we're handling it itself. I push that one a little hard, but I don't have a problem reusing those. Pump inspection. 
we look at the uh, the gears that are in here themselves inner and outer gear usually not a problem on the on the Chrysler units they see very rare, uh, very rare failures very little wear problems we're looking for scoring scratches on the outer gear itself where it rides in the pump body same thing in the pump body itself looking for wear around the outside diameter inner gear itself both of them for that matter we're looking for wear on the face of each gear either side Chrysler usually not a problem the gears can be reused sometimes those are available aftermarket just be aware that most of the time like most pump gears these are directional we've got a taper right here and that taper needs to go down into the pump itself to face the converter hub makes for easier installation on this side it's a little more squared off so remember tapered side faces down and of course bushings I didn't mention most all the bushings in this unit should be replaced rather than just what they call the critical bushings the pump and the rear bushing I like to put a whole set in them they are a high wear item they're not that expensive so we just replace them bushing and seal of course both on the pump and if we want to do clearance checks on this pump with those installed once again we would put a flat edge across here we would take our feeler blades check for hopefully no more than about two thousandths of clearance between the face of these gears and the face of the pump same thing in between <clears throat> i don't know if we've got a thin enough one yeah i can kind of show you we'd also check the outer diameter here see how thick of a, a feeler blade we can get it's a lot more accurate if we take the pump apart take all the fluid you know brake clean it and so forth there but we want to make sure we don't have too much clearance between the outer edge of that gear and the pump body itself i'll get blades stacked up there so something along those lines we'd be checking there that's two thousandths is pretty tight we do the same thing here later cross put our straight edge see if that feeler blade will come out of there indicating an excessive amount of wear on that pump if so we'd have to replace probably the whole pump body itself and once again the surface here where these guys ride against looking for any major scratches gouging in that area if we had a, a problem here we could face that on a lathe if we were lucky enough to have one or just have to replace the uh, the pump stator itself Checking band surfaces. We've got two bands in here, low reverse and the intermediate or second gear band. This guy rides around that drum there. The band itself didn't look too bad, so we probably don't have any issues with that surface, but we do need to check that. The bands can fail, the lining can come off. We can scratch the surface once again. That would be something we'd need to resurface on the lathe or replace the entire drum itself. Down inside here, this bore where our ceiling rings ride. There's the two guys on that stator support or pump half. And he rides down on there. We've got to check for wear in that bore where those two metal rings ride. Make sure we don't have an issue with a wear problem there. And the other band surface here for the low reverse band rides on that drum. We want to clean that, check that. This is in real nice shape here. Once again, either resurfaced if it was uh, had damage or replaced the entire, entire drum itself. Also, looking for ceiling ring wear inside this pump or stator support. We've got rings on this drum here. One, two, three. We've got three ceiling surfaces down in here. Also need to check. Make sure our pick or screwdriver doesn't catch in those. If those are worn, no, uh, no way out on that. You just got to replace the uh, stator support itself. Those ring wear would cause a leak in that clutch circuit, which would cause a premature failure of the clutches themselves.
This show is a ton of hours to produce and we could really use your support. You can learn more by checking out the video description down below. So you just got done watching the inspection video, which was uh, preceded by the teardown video. We've got a number of other teardown and inspection videos in the works. We've also got a full blown uh, rebuild series currently in the works, the Turbo 400. Uh, I've got torque converter videos coming up, got more 4L60E hydraulics videos, and the list goes on and on. Point is, if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell too, so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Once again, my name's Robert, and I will see you next time.